Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ginger Binger Podcast. It's me again this week, and I'm doing another question time because it was so much fun last time. So without further ado, let's get into the first question and, you know, see what I have. Question one. Is it better to sacrifice personal freedoms in the name of safety? Ooh. Starting it out really deep today. Well, if I'm being totally honest... I understand the argument of sacrificing personal freedoms for public safety, but I can't condone that. Personal freedoms, I honestly believe, have to come over safety. Um, because it, once we start sacrificing freedoms, it is very easy for anybody to say, hey, you know, get the ball rolling on, more freedoms being taken away in the name of safety, keeping us safe. That is a very slippery slope that people can easily abuse and manipulate to their own whim. I mean, look at certain religions keeping people controlled through fear. It's your safety. Uh, tyrannical governments. I mean, like anything, you know, we're giving a personal freedom is what is considered, even if it's against popular opinion, I honestly believe that it's just something that's not worth it, you know? Uh, I think Ben Franklin may have said it best, I think it's Ben Franklin, those who are willing to sacrifice freedom for safety don't deserve either. And anybody who's willing to say, hey, you have to sacrifice your freedom and we'll keep you safe, they're not looking out for your best interests. And even when it comes to like things like, I personally believe that everybody should vaccinate their children, but I can't force people not to. It, it's kind of the hypocrisy. I think everybody should do it in name of safety of the human race and safety of their child. But I can't find, you know, I can't bring myself to, like, vote for it. If they were to pass all that mandates, people vaccinate their children. Now, let me get, let me, let me be a little more clear on this. If you don't vaccinate your child, I think you are abusing your child right there. You're refusing to keep them safe from preventable diseases, you're a piece of shit, honestly. You're really, you know, you're being very selfish, and you're really, any, you're, what am I trying to say here? You are going against science with no real evidence. That's the thing. If there was actual evidence suggesting this, which there isn't, then there's a little more of a debate. But right now, there's not. It's just people being stubborn for the sake of being stubborn. So, yeah, even even though I don't agree with people not vaccinating their children, I can't bring myself to force a mandate or vote for a law that makes people, forces them to vaccinate their children. As, you know, and that's, I think, the issue here is it's so complicated. It's not just black and white. There's so much more into it. And, uh... I just wanted to let everybody know this isn't going to be the strictly anti-vaxxing podcast. <laughs> um, it's just that's where I go, I guess, when I talk about like very delicate issues. You know, I think vaxxing your children is something that every parent should do and should have that choice to do, but should easily, it shouldn't have to be a choice for them. It's just like, yes, I want to keep my child alive and safe and have them grow prospering in a beautiful world. Now, I, I believe in this or... Oh, this is, you know, I don't believe in science because what has science ever done for us? Fuck you. Especially if the parent themselves is vaccinated. Fuck you. But yes, is it better to sacrifice personal freedoms in the name of safety? No. Okay. Question number two. If you could have your own international day, what would it be? Um... Well, you know, you got all these days that's like international, you know, burger day, international cookie day, sibling day, all this stuff. Where is, I think there should be, I was going to say a review of authority day, but I think that should be every day we're reviewing people in authority. Because if we, people who are in positions of power should always be under the microscope to make sure they are not abusing said power, should always be there ready to be critiqued, always they're being watched. And I mean, like, not following the president's family around or the prime minister's family and, you know, seeing what they have for dinner, that type of evasiveness, but 
their policies and their way they're conducting themselves amongst our leaders and people in positions of power, yes, they should be up for review almost all the time. Maybe not all the time is a good word, but like they should be prepared to, if the public demands it, to answer for it. And any leader that, you know, says, oh, just trust in me, no, absolutely not. How could you, how could you do that? I actually saw a clip, I'm going to go off a little bit here. I saw a clip the other day, and it was just a clip, so I didn't get the full story, but the phrasing itself was, it was a woman, and she said, I never thought I'd see a dictator in my life, but if I'm going to see one, I want it to be Trump. That, I don't think that encapsulates a majority of Trump supporters or a majority of people on the right. I think that just is a vocal nutball who represents a small amount of nutballs. But it, 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 it's scary. So, you know, I, mean, I guess I'm not going to say review authority day. Maybe I just wanted to go off on that tangent. Um, but an interesting day, I don't know, you, well, something fun, you know, like I would say an international, you know, cut work day, cut, cut school, well, I mean, we had skip day in school, so I guess that's not it. I, you see, it, it's hard because there might be a day out like this anyway, you know, art appreciation day, family art day, I don't know, something where it gets like a group of family together and they enjoy a piece of you know, creative art, whether it's them making something, enjoying something, like watching, listening to music. And, you know, and that's really what I would do is, you know, kids learning more about, you know, culture and art through culture. Or culture through art. You know, that, that, to me, is something that is actually very, you know, useful. You know, and I'm not complaining about International Taco Day, International Burger Day, but whenever I go on Twitter and see Happy International, I just want to roll my eyes constantly. Um, yeah, uh, if I want to be a little cynical, I want to almost have like, um, a day for retail workers where it's like the purge, where retail workers just get to go off. It's like the sales in that store are really low. Uh, so it's like almost like Black Friday, but the workers get to just like go ham fisted <laughs> on the people. Now, obviously I'm not being hundred percent serious. It's more of just like, it'd be a funny little sketch to write something like that. Um, Hell, even if the workers could just say what they really felt towards, you know, rude-ass customers, it'd be amazing. I think that's the problem when people are really rude to people just because they know that workers aren't allowed to say anything back because companies are more obsessed with a nickel walking out of that door than, you know, their customer or their employee's dignity or anything like that. And I'm sorry if I feel a little cynical today. I'm just going through a really bit of a... Of a hard time when it comes to employment um, but I won't go too deep into that so if I come off a little cynical like please try to understand you know not everything's always hunky-dory but try to make the best of it okay so let me re did I answer that question international day um yeah family in a pre family art day that's what I would do you know maybe name it something a little better than that because I kind of sound really like dweeby and lame but you know that's what I would go with all right, do you have any plans for Burger Week? Hell yes. Um, for those of you who aren't in uh, Halifax, I don't know if they have these in other cities, but Burger Week, uh, almost probably 85% of the restaurants make a specialty burger uh, for the week. And this week, it, or this year is from March 28th to April 3rd, I think. And I want to go to two places this year. So one I want to go, I think it's to the Vandal Burger, which... Um, it was at one point right across the street from Gus's pub. They do like a donut, a burger between two donuts, which looks amazing. Um, and the other one, I'm not sure, me and my lady are going to decide on it, but we looked through the pictures and they all look delicious. Uh, if anybody out there, one of my buddies, you and you're watching this, let's go out for Burger Week. I want to go out at least twice. The thing I hate, the problem I think with Burger Week though is... Um, I mean, this year it's not that bad so far. Like, we're having an actual spring. Last few years, it's been fucking cold. Like, and you're waiting outside in the line because everybody is waiting in line to get a burger. But, my God, I really think they should push this back to maybe late April and May. That would be ideal. But, mmm, Burger Week. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. So for Burger Week plans, I know I'm hitting Vandal's Burger, I think it's called, and the other one is kind of a coin toss, but we'll see what the lady wants to do. 
Okay. Question number four. Do you think dismissing opinions based on association and gender is necessary in topics that are about said things? Honestly, no. I don't think dismissing anyone's opinion is healthy. Um, now, that said, there are moments where I feel hypocritical because there are some things I feel like I'm dismissing opinions when it's someone, like when it comes to gun control, uh, when it comes to like someone from the NRA talking. That to me is not an opinion. They're making money from that. So they're, they're at a position right there where it's not an opinion for a discussion. It's they're not going to change. I feel like when having a discussion and opinions, it's two things that people should be, in theory, willing to move on. If you're like using the gun control debate just for uh, when it comes to someone from the NRA, they shouldn't be involved in that discussion because they have no benefit in gun restrictions or anything along those lines. Now I have to also reiterate, I'm not anti-gun. I believe everyone should be allowed to own a piece of a, a gun to protect themselves. I do think there should be some restrictions on what you can obviously obtain. I mean, you know, they're like, and again, I'm only speaking from a Canadian point of view, we can get shotguns and rifles with just a regular license, a handgun with a specialty license, and I think an AR-15 is like the closest you can get. I think it's an AR-15 with a max capacity of five rounds per clip. Now you have to apply for specialty license for that, and I believe to go through even more training. Which is something that I think those are very fine in gun laws, honestly. Um, when it comes to like the gun debate down in the states, from what I you know research into and look into it, I feel magazine clips being you know should be mandated to a certain amount that they can carry. Also, obviously, automatic weapons. I don't think I think most states have a law against automatic weapons, but I think you should have to have a background check before you can get a weapon. I understand it is a right to bear arms, but it's also a, yeah. This is one of those like safety for personal freedom debates. You know, it's it's not that black and white. I feel that's one thing when it comes to these debates, people try to simplify, and it's and it's not. So. When it comes to guns, I think, you know, you should be allowed to own a weapon. But if you're dangerous, you know, if you have a history of mental health or very bad anger issues or something along those lines where you may be a danger to people, I don't really know if I'm the one to make that call. In my opinion, anybody should be allowed to own a weapon as long as they meet a certain criteria for safety, I guess. And definitely you should have to go through training with it. Definitely you should have to take a course. And even if those courses are government funded. That's just my opinion on the matter. Let me know if anybody's listening. Let us know what you think. Um, but the question wasn't about gun control. It was about dismissing opinions. I know where this question came from. Yes, it was the whole Captain Marvel, um, not controversy, but my opinion on it was the movie was just kind of bleh. You know, like I thought, honestly, it got better towards the end, but I honestly think I didn't like Brie Larson as um, Captain Marvel. And when I was looking into like the, the controversy around it, for those audio listeners, I'm doing the quotes, there's obviously like, you have your internet people who are like, oh, it's just a woman, and you know, women can't be strong. You're like those people, obviously, they're completely fucking stupid. Okay? But you also have people saying, if you didn't like the movie, then you're against feminism or you're against uh, women and that's not true at all I mean both are extremes but even Brie Larson herself this was an interview a while back I believe but it was she was talking about a wrinkle in time I believe the movie was and she said she's tired of hearing white dudes give their opinions uh, because that movie's not made for them a movie that's not made for sorry, a movie that's not made for a specific demographic or made for a specific demographic does not does not devalue the opinion of other people looking in. My prime example, Beauty and the Beast was made for children. 
and it was nominated for an Oscar. Not because a bunch of people, you know, not because the children got together and said we should nominate this for an Oscar, because it was a good film. I can't speak for a wrinkle in time, but I keep hearing that um, people should be brought in for, you know, Kickstarters for uh, underprivileged girls to go see Captain Marvel because it's such a cultural experience. Um, the movie was just kind of boring. It wasn't, it wasn't a great movie. It wasn't a bad movie by any means. It was just very just run-of-the-mill and boring. I feel like we shouldn't praise art higher because we want a political um, movement or political ideology to go forward. And maybe I'm wording this wrong. Obviously, I have to, and I can't believe I have to say this, women can be just as awesome as men. Women are just as awesome as men. That's a better way to put it. It's story and character that make movies, in my opinion. And I feel like if we're just going to be like giving a bunch of movies praise because they're including a specific group of people, we should be doing that anyway. It's, it's like Chris Rock used to say. People want credit for shit they're supposed to do. Like, I take care of my kids. You're supposed to take care of your kids. I put, you know, my movie is diverse in ethnicity. Your movie should be diverse in ethnicity unless there's a specific reason why that doesn't work in the case of its story. So, you know, I think the problem I have with, like, all these, like, controversies about certain movies and using you know, putting a lady in the main star and then using that as like to promote it. It's that they're turning these issues that people are having into dollars and they're corporatizing it. I don't know if that's a word. But they're there just making money off it and it feels so disingenuous. It it feels like those old like um, training videos where they have like a big gr group of diverse people, which is fine, but it feels... Uh, I don't really know how to word this. It feels gimmicky. That's the maybe the words. Like instead of it just being a group of people, it's a group with everybody. I understand trying to appeal to everybody, but it feels almost annoyingly diverse. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a fake way that a company is using to try and manipulate more dollars or more, you know, a specific reaction out of. It. That's just how I feel about these things. But when it comes to like saying, oh, this movie wasn't made for, you know, white men or this movie wasn't made for this. Listen, that is a load of shit right there, okay? That is someone trying to say, you, we don't like what you had to say about this, so we're going to try and devalue your opinion. That's bullshit. That's what, that's what feminism and all of these movements are fighting against, devaluing of a group based on gender, race, any of that. And if you do it to a group, the group that's in power, like the white males, it, it doesn't make you any better than them, you know? You can say you're punching up, but you're still punching, you're still doing it. And that doesn't, you know, fire, you can't put, a, put out fire with fire. That's my opinion on it. If you disagree, let me know, but I honestly think if you're saying that it's okay to devalue someone's opinion based on uh, their association of gender, you know, whether it be f you know, if I said, oh, it, this movie wasn't made for women, so obviously women aren't going to like it, so their opinions don't count. No, fuck you. It's the same way if you said, oh, this movie isn't made for men, so their opinions don't count. Fuck you. There is no reason that you should be doing that to people. So, to reiterate, no, do not devalue someone's opinion based on that. Moving on. <laughs> you know, I think I do have some fun questions in here. This isn't just going to be the droopy, serious podcast. I certainly hope not. Okay. How do you feel about your current job? <sighs> you know, it's it's definitely the easiest retail job I've ever had. I get paid uh, like better than any retail job, but I still don't like it, obviously. I mean, there are... And this is with any job, I think, comes with the territory. There's always some schoolyard bullshit, or there's always some, you know, politicking to get certain places, or undercutting each other. Here's where I think I can, un I can understand politicking in a job where everybody, you know, you can move up and make so much more money for yourself. In the job I'm at, you really don't. And I think politicking doesn't help anybody. They just ends up, it just ends up hurting everybody. 
Um, and I really feel like a lot of clicky schoolyard bullshit. And this is with every job, I guess, but my God, is that a real pain in the ass when, you know, you're just trying to go there, collect your check, do your job and go home and people are trying to bring you into their drama and their bullshit. It's uh, not pleasant, honestly. That being said, I can't go too much into it because obviously I'm still employed at this place. Um, I'm not going to say the name. I'm not going to name any individuals involved. I just feel right now I'm not in a very good place employment-wise. Oh, I'm not in a very happy place employment-wise. But I'm doing this in hopes of one day be able to do this full-time to entertain you guys, you know. And I hope that if any of you guys have the same aspirations as me, that you go for it. You take that chance. You only live on this earth once, and if you know you don't go for it, in my opinion, you're probably going to hate yourself for the rest of your life. So, as it turns, you know, current job position, it could be worse, but it could be a hell of a lot better. Okay. So, next question. Okay, this one will be fun. If you won the jackpot, what would you do with the money? Well, if we're going to say jackpot, let's just go a little outrageous here and say $50 million. Now, I'm Canadian. We don't get taxed on lottery winnings here. You get taxed on it the next year because it's, your, cause, cause it's the money you have, but you don't get taxed on your base sum of money. So I won $50 million. I quit my job, obviously. I give it my two weeks, though, because I, I, to my knowledge, if you, give your, if you don't give the proper amount of time, in theory, a company could sue you, and if they knew you won the lottery, I wouldn't trust them not to. So give them my two weeks. What I would see, what I would try to do is give them my two weeks and then put in for vacation time for those two weeks. Maybe, yeah, even do that. Put in for my vacation first, get the two weeks, and then give my two weeks notice. <laughs> That'd be a dirty little trick. Um, but, yeah, I would really what I would like to do is, you know, I travel a little, maybe go to like Barcelona. Um, definitely like Ireland, a few places like that. Maybe do like a year traveling. I would definitely, you know, give my family some money, buy my mom a new house, buy my dad something, buy my brother something, and I would definitely buy myself a nice big piece of property and put a nice house on it. Like, not an extravagant, just a nice two-story house, maybe with a basement, just far enough out where, you know, I don't have to see too many, you know, nobody's peeking into my place. I, I'd probably move out to the country. Um... But I would still just keep doing what I'm doing here, you know, writing, trying to make more productions, podcasting. It's so much fun. I would definitely go out and maybe to Vancouver, rent an apartment, and try to make it as an actor. I think that'd be so much fun. I would definitely try to live off as much of the interest that I can get from the bank because I don't want to spend all that money. Maybe what I would do too is invest the money into some businesses, uh, maybe some put it into some other currencies because if our dollar goes down I'm not going to like lose it all if the De Great Depression happens. That'd be my fucking luck. So yeah, I would definitely do that. I would definitely stay away from the club scene um, because especially if people know you've got money, oh, people are going to try to fuck with you then. Um, I would definitely try to keep it as quiet as possible that I won the lottery. Like I know here they take your picture and everything, but I would hope that I would try to change the way I look or something like that because I don't want... And we're back. So yeah, I would definitely try to keep it quiet that I had any money because once people know you've got money, people stop being genuine with you and people start wanting things from you. And I don't want that, you know. I, I really like, I value my privacy, I value my alone time. And I value people just talking to me, not at me, not wanting anything in return. I think most people do. But, yeah. Oh, but if I'm going to like go wild, let's just say just you have to blow it all. Oh, I would go down to like, I'd buy an island and just put a castle on it and just do blow for the rest of my life. No, I couldn't do that. The cheapskate in me wouldn't allow me to just waste my money, so. But yeah, I would definitely have a blast, and that's for sure. All right, next question. How would, do you feel about Hollywood remaking movies and TV? And what is one thing that you would remake yourself? That's a good question. Um, how do I feel about Hollywood constantly remaking things? Um, I feel we're in a position now where people, like Hollywood is obviously like a big corporate entity, but it feels like 
nobody wants to, instead of making, you know, everybody wants to go big with these $500 billion movies based off of a license that they own. Instead of putting just millions into like, like a couple million into these smaller movies to see what you can do. I have no problem with certain things being remade. Um, I just feel that we shouldn't be just relying on those. Like it's cool when you see things like The Hunger Games getting put into movies or Harry Potter. And that's all fine and great. It's I would like to see you know more original movies in theaters and more than just you know a week like actually you know have space in theaters because that's one thing that drives me nuts is when a big fucking movie has like eight fucking theaters playing it because they've got like D-Box, 3D, IMAX, 3D, and then they have one screening of it in non-3D because that's how I like my movies. No 3D, no gimmicks, I just want to watch the movie. Uh, but when it comes to like remaking things, I, you know, like, I think George Lucas said it really well that Star Wars could never be made today because nobody would want to take that risk and that's really disheartening because I really think you know, I understand it from a business point of view, don't get me wrong. I'm not living in a fair to a world where I think, you know, oh, these businesses are just being ridiculous. I get it. It just saddens me that uh, art, you know, and I guess, I guess, again, I'm living in the world. Art's been bought. Art was bought a long time ago. Um, so, it, yeah, it just kind of... It's disheartening sometimes. I understand it though. But let's get into a little more fun, the fun half of this question. What would you remake if you could remake it? Like if I could remake it myself, I'd love to remake, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is The Warriors, the 1979 film. And the changes that I would do to it, because I've heard people saying, oh, they'd remake The Warriors and put it in today's setting. I wouldn't. I'd put it like in a, like a Blade Runner setting, like in the future, and they're hiding like, in from this big city, you know, like make it almost like New York in like 2133, you know, like flying cars and you know, they have to travel through the subway sewer and everything like that and they have to escape the gang and the police that's all looking for them and even like you'd have some robots chasing them, you know, um, I think that'd be really cool to do that type of movie again um, in a different setting obviously, like the future. Uh, it can allow for some really fun action, some fun character moments. Honestly, and I think too, it, you know, obviously we're making something, you're going to have to, you know, you want to take what worked about the original, but also take your own spin on it. Because you don't want to change it completely and make it a whole new, this ain't the Warriors that we know. Um, but the Warriors would be one of the things I'd love to remake myself. Um... I would say The Godfather, but I think that's kind of blasphemous, especially because there's no way I could do it as good as Francis Ford Coppola did. Um, I don't know, like maybe... There are probably a ton of movies I'd like to... Let me just um, scratch this question off for a second and just add a new little bit to it. If I were to remake or put make a video game into a movie, what would I do? There, I got a few more answers for. I would love to do a Life is Strange movie. And I think a Life is Strange movie would work better for, like, YouTube, where you could actually involve the audience in just the decisions, not the movements or anything like that, but the decisions. Because I think a choose-your-own-adventure works perfectly with Life is Strange. And what I would do is I wouldn't have anything to do with Max Caulfield and Chloe Price or um, any of the boys in the second Life is Strange. It'd be a whole new story. But I'd still keep it young people obviously that indie kind of setting and it would work perfectly for an online release now, it's something like YouTube Red or something like that so that would be really fun um, another would be fun would be Uncharted because since Indiana Jones we haven't really had these treasure hunting adventure films I mean we had a little bit with um, National Treasure but again they didn't really have that fun adventure you know quirkiness to it and you can say that all Nathan Drake is is just a modernized version of Indiana Jones. I totally agree, but you could still have some real fun with that. You know, those that swashbuckling adventure style that Nathan Drake is known for could translate really well to the screen. And you could do so many great visuals with it. You'd have to try to set it apart from Indiana Jones, but I would definitely keep Nathan Drake as a character. The reason being is I would just tell a different story with it. 
Yeah, it, it's funny how in Life is Strange I would have no characters as a brand new story, but Nathan Drake I would keep and borrow elements from each of the games. I would definitely pro I'd keep Sully, Nathan, and um, Elena. Those are the only three you need. Everybody else would be brand new. I like Chloe, but you don't need her. Um, but yeah, you could definitely do a few fun of those fun adventures of those. Um, and I think <laughs> I don't know if you could make a Grand Theft Auto movie, just because it's so dependent on the player as much. Because the zaniness can be brought out tenfold by what the player is doing. So I don't know, but definitely it would be Uncharted and uh, Life is Strange. I had a brain fart there. So, and as for what movie I would remake, I would remake The Warriors. Okay. Uh, do you think people have the right to their opinion, even if their opinion is causing more damage and is dangerous? I think I already answered that. Um... They do have the right to their opinion, but they don't have the right to not be criticized for their opinion. You can't hide behind, oh, that's just my opinion, and not be criticized. When I say, when I use the term, it's just my opinion, I'm saying that's what I think. I can't. I don't represent anybody but me. I feel like there are people who say, well, that's just his opinion, or that's how he feels. It's like, listen, that doesn't immune you from criticism or being called out for being an asshole or any of those. So yeah, you do have the right to your opinion, but don't you, you know, don't preach some hateful shit and then just hide behind, you know, oh, you know, it's my right. Yeah, it's your right, but it's not your right to be immune from it either. All right, I got two more questions here. I got to wrap it up soon because I'm going to work. And, uh, yeah, that's not going to be fun. All right, so what is the best year in grade school? Best year? Um... Well, for me, it was, I think, when I was 17, so that was grade 11, I think. I liked grade 12, too, except I had a bit of a relationship, and it, it wasn't a good relationship. Um, so that kind of soured my senior year, but grade 11 was so much fun. I was just, con you know, it was fun to go home on the weekend, just game out on Xbox with your boys. I think Call of Duty, I don't know if it was Black Ops or if it was Modern Warfare 2 that came out that year. I don't know why I did my Stevie Wonder. Um, it's, it was really fun just doing that. You didn't have a care in the world. I should have had a care in the world being, you know, so close to graduating. Um, we did Grease. I, for anybody who doesn't know, my first bit of acting I ever did was to play Grease. I played the character Kaniki, and I had to sing Grease Lightning, which scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I have no musical talent whatsoever, and my first ever play is a fucking musical like oh my f grease scared the ever loving shit out of me it was such a blast to do but i remember right before i had to go out there i swear to god the whole room could see i almost died of a heart attack but it was so much fun i sang my heart out not good by the way but the whole crowd went wild they were supportive i had a royal family and a royal friend so that definitely helped but it was such a blast to you know be there and have some fun with your friends and you know, I really do miss doing theater. Um, it's such a blast, and it's so different from movie making. I love making movies. Don't get me wrong. But there's something about just being in there and going through the whole play in one, you know, one go through. And just getting it down and f being in that energy. And I don't mean to sound pretentious, but it is just so... It's nothing like you've ever done, I don't think. And you form a real bond with these people, because... You're all in this intimate, creative, you know, collaboration. And you're very intense for like four weeks straight. You're seeing each other every day for like 12 hours a day. Getting to know each other and being in these intimate moments. It almost for it forges a weird bond. People who I don't, who, who I've been in plays with, who I don't ever talk to anymore. Or we might have problems. We still have that bond of being in theater. It's, it's a weird, you know, process, but it's so... It's so rewarding when it comes off, too, when it's great. And nothing, you know, and, and it's so great to, at the end of it to have a cast party with your friends and just get to let loose and, you know, talk about, oh, this didn't work, or this didn't work, or I shit my pants in this moment. You know, just some of the funny little moments I remember. Um, Grease, prime example there. <laughs> we had to do a, right before we went into Grease Lightning, 
um, a character in the previous scene had to eat a Twinkie, but she left her Twinkie on the stage. So I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna kick this off the stage so it doesn't like cause me to slip or something during my dance number. And so I take one step and I drop kick it, and it's supposed to go off to the side. But I, the way my foot is angled, I walk with my foot kind of out on a weird degree. It went more like diagonal and went right past the pianist's head. She just dodged it and it exploded on the drum behind her. <laughs> and the drummers there just covered in Twinkie, just going for it. It was so funny because I'm sitting there like, oh my god. I asked my mom if she noticed it. She didn't. She thought it was just a dance move. We get back stage because it was intermission and everybody's just losing their shit. It was so fucking funny. It was so funny. I had so much fun doing it. Oh, like, And that's why I went pursued theater after school. I really wish. Um, maybe I'll get back into it. I'd love to get back on the stage with people. It's just finding the time. That's the problem. Definitely, though, one of my things is to write a bucket, or to write a bucket, on my bucket list is to write a, like, a play or a musical and just have it performed, you know, whether it be on stage or if I film it. I, I would really like to do a musical, though. I know I have no musical ability. I think I can write lyrics a little good, because that, that makes sense to me. It's like, okay, it's more of finding, you know, a partner to work on the musical side and the rhythm side like I don't know anything about that I have no experience or anything but it's definitely something I'd like to get done in the next 10 to 15 years uh, kinda like how the South Park guys just decided to make their first movie a musical and then decided to do the Book of Mormon that would be so much fun but okay I'm getting a little off track here Grade 11 was definitely my favorite year of school. I met some great people through theater. I had some great fun with my friends. I had some great courses. I think I was doing drama class and film class. And I got both Englishes done and in the same year. And it was so great. I had such, it was such a hoot. I learned how to edit that year. Um, it really, that year really shaped me. Because in, you know, in high school, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do. I think it was grade 9, you know how they have the career day? I went into the RCMP because I wanted to be a cop. No, I would never have the makings of a cop. You know, I, I would be too, I don't think I could handle the, the shit you see, and I don't think I could control my temper when you see someone who is blatantly a piece of shit and who's so smug about it. I wouldn't be a good police officer. <laughs> Again, getting off tangent, but yeah, grade 11... Definitely the best, and going downtown with your friends during skipping class and all that shit. Don't skip class, children. You know, you're going to regret it one day. No, I don't regret it one day. <laughs> um, do as I say, not as I do. So yeah, grade 11, definitely the probably the best. You know, if, if I didn't have that shitty relationship in high school, or in grade 12, grade 12 would have been my best, but eh, you don't always win, right? Okay, so my final question today before I got to go. What advice would you give yourself from 10 years ago? So 10 years ago, I'd be 15 years old. I would say, stop not doing things because you're scared to do them. Whether they turn out good or turn out bad, you become stronger and you become a better person with every attempt. Whether you fail or succeed, and you'll fail a thousand times before you get on the good, before you succeed. But you'll become a stronger person. And you become more formidable when you have to deal with conflicts. And that's, I think, what I was scared of the most is dealing with conflicts because I was always afraid of just losing my temper and then just, you know what I mean, screwing myself over because I lost my temper. Because it's almost like not knowing, you know, I know how to get mad. I don't know how to confront something in a diplomatic, straightforward way. Um, that would be a piece of advice I'd give myself. And also, go... Give it 110% everything you do. Don't half-ass it. I half-assed a lot of shit through high school. But go 112% through everything. Don't know why I said 112, but whatevs. Um, give it 112% and, and cut the people out of your life who don't, who aren't helping you, who are just being negative, or just make it all about themselves. Listen, you ain't got time for that shit. Don't worry about, you know, what, you know, if you're going to have a girlfriend for this day or something like that, fuck it, okay? If people, you know, be who you are, be confident in what you can do, and always be willing to learn to grow, you'll do fine. 
and really that's advice saying to myself right now it's still I'm still learning I'm still growing yeah 15 year old Dylan Jesus Christ if I can find a picture of 15 year old Dylan I'll put him in the put him in the video here um, if I can't I'm sorry but I'm pretty sure I have a picture of 15 year old Dylan lying around somewhere so you can see the before and after and be like ooh and they'd be like that guy turned into that stud muffin damn <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to wrap that up here today, guys. Thank you, as always, for listening. If you have any questions or comments, anything you'd like to know, just write at me. Get at me. I have, you know, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at the, I think it's at O underscore Ginger Binger. I'll put it in the video here, and I'll put it in the link in the podcast if you're listening to the audio. And hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Ginger Binger. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You guys know the drill. If you like what you see, let me know. And if you don't, let me know. What can I do better? That's a great help right there. What would you guys like to see a little bit more? What would you guys like to hear on the podcast? I'm trying to get some more guests on. You know, who knows what this will be in a year's time. But all I know is that I'll be here in a year's time. Okay, guys. As always, keep on binging. Uh. <sighs>